This I'm gonna put over here. Hey everyone. It's been a hot minute since I've been on here and I apologize. I have high intentions of filming for you guys and sharing our life and sharing what we're doing. But the fact is, sometimes I can just get things done so much faster without filming. And then I have, um, you know, it's, it's our life. And sometimes I do, I wanna have my kids filmed all the time. Um, you know, there's that balance and sometimes they get annoyed. And so then I feel guilty not, you know, I feel guilty filming and then I feel guilty not filming. So <laughs> today I feel like filming and for good reason, good measure. It's just a couple days after Christmas and we're all cozying inside. We had um, crazy weather. I think most of the East Coast did. I think most of the nation did. Um, Midwest to the East um, where we had temperatures that were like zero degrees. Um, we had our wood stove cranked. It was cozy inside. All the animals were as cozy as we could make them. Uh, water was freezing. All the kids were on animal duty because I don't, right? Are these for those good? Yeah, those are good. Those are for animal ones. Um, I like to stay inside. They like to go out and feed and milk and Brooke was helping them and I kept the house warm and had hot food cooking. So today I wanted to share with you um, how we render down lard. So Christmas Eve, we picked up our two hogs from the butcher. We have a mobile butcher that comes out to the farm and he does um, the kill and then they gut and skin. Um, he does not scold, if you're familiar with hog butchering. Um, a lot of times butchers will scold, meaning they dunk it in um, the, the pig in hot water, killed of course, um, hot water, and then they take the hair off. Kind of like what you would do with a chicken, um, put it in scalding water to get the feathers off. Um, and that purpose is really, if you're making prosciutto or if you want cracklings, um, or if you want you know, the skin on your hams. But really, um, we've always just skinned our pigs when we've done the butchering. Um, what we found when we were doing the butchering, a lot went to waste because by the end of the day, we were done and we just threw the hams and the bacon and everything that needed to be smoked into the freezer. And then a couple months later, we'd be like, oh yeah, we really should smoke that. And then it, it's like, you know, it's a lot of work. And so we just never did it. And um, pork can, especially fat, like, um, hams, um, bacon can get freezer burnt very quickly. So um, it's really best to eat those things up quicker um, than let's say sausage and um, some of those like, well, sausage can be cured as well, but um, but like the, the Boston butt, the arm roast, that kind of thing. Um, but what we did love when we butchered our own, we rendered down all of the lard and Last year, we love our butcher. Last year, we only got back four small containers, like probably pint-sized containers of the lard. And we were like, where's all the lard? Because we know pigs have lots of fat on them. Um, but what we think they did was just render down the leaf lard, which is all the lard, all the fat that lines the organs, which is like the most pristine, amazing lard that you will get. It's very white, very clear, um, like very, um, not clear, yeah, very white, all right? We asked for all the lard back this year, not rendered, so we just got big chunks of lard, and um, yesterday, Brooke, um, he took it through the food processor um, just to make small little pieces, that way it melts down faster, so I'm gonna show you this process, because we cook a lot with lard. Um, the best donuts are made in lard. Um, French fries, right? Sweet potatoes. Um, our hand dug, our hand dug sweet potatoes. Our regular hand dug white potatoes make the best French fries. And don't let anyone tell you that lard is not healthy. It is actually the between butter and lard. It is the best fat for you. Um, 
When you're cooking with seed oils, all of those seeds, let's talk about Crisco for a second. The seeds, um, cotton seed, is sprayed so that the leaves fall off and it's easier for the seed to be processed. Um, it's currently made out of cotton. Cotton seed, honey. Yeah, yeah, cotton seed. I know. It was actually. I there, it's no, that's, um, I know, rapeseed, cotton seed. There's all these different seeds that actually are not even meant for human consumption. And, and industry just has us consuming this because they tell us it's healthier, it's heart healthy, but the way that it's processed, um, the chemicals that are sprayed on it is not healthy at all. And so we consume lard from our pigs and that is a, um, a majority, butter, lard. Um, we will cook with olive oil or use it for dipping or making salad dressings, um, coconut oil and avocado oil are really the only oils that we use in our home. But lard, we use a lot, and especially to make um, tortillas. They make the best tortillas. Um, and like I said already, potatoes and donuts and, and those, those things, we don't really eat donuts a whole lot, but when it snows, right, donut day. So let me show you this process and kind of run down a little bit of the history with you, um, why lard isn't being used anymore. And I think more women are coming back to cooking with lard, more families are cooking with it because um, we've opened our eyes to the media propaganda of what companies do to tell us something is healthy to sell a product. Um, so let me tell you the history on that in just a second. Okay, that's enough playing with candles. Yeah. So I just put all the rendered lard in quart jars. I like the wide mouth ones, if you can see that. Um, but I like to warm them in the oven first, just on warm, because this lard is super hot, and so I don't want any glass shattering. So I'm gonna put these in the oven just for a little bit until they're heated up. right into jars. Now, I guess back in the old day from what I learned is, you know, women would just keep their lard in their cabinets or big buckets of it um, in their kitchen. We've tried that and it was fine. Um, in the heat of summer though, it tends to not last long in our kitchen. So I just feel more comfortable putting these jars in the freezer. I don't fill them very full. Um, I leave a nice two inch headspace just for, I mean, it's not liquid, it's solid when it goes in the freezer, but I don't know, I still just leave a two inch headspace and I store them in the freezer and then we take them out as needed um, to fry things, to make pie crust, to make um, tortillas. I tried crackers, they don't do, they're not, it's not really good in crackers. I did, but it didn't taste too good. And lard has a quite a smell when you're cooking with it, um, frying with it, even rendering it down. But that taste isn't there in your food products. Um, it actually tastes really good. And I had someone at one of my classes. She said, you know, I don't know. We made we made um, uh, tacos and. 
We made tortillas. tortillas, right? And she ate two of them and she's like, I actually don't feel bad eating this food. Like my stomach doesn't hurt, I don't feel bloated. And that's the whole purpose of eating. When you eat really good, clean food and food that your body knows that isn't full of chemicals, that isn't hydrogenated, um, isn't sprayed, um, you know, your body knows how to use it and process it and use it for nutrients. And you're not going to feel bloated. You're not gonna feel bad on real food. And so I highly recommend going to your butcher, asking for lard, um, I guarantee you go and you search out butchers in your area and they will have lard for you to take and render um, that you can purchase there. Now ask if those animals were pasture raised or um, you know what they were fed. I always say do that. If you can't though, if you can't find a pasture raised pig, it's going to be better than using Crisco. Let me tell you the history on Crisco. I know I've been saving this for like the very tail end. Um, Crisco was actually brought onto the market, brought into the scene in 1911 by Procter and Gamble. Um, Procter and Gamble. Procter and Gamble. I'm sure you're probably very familiar with Procter and Gamble. I believe now the company has since Crisco has since um, or Procter, Procter and Gamble has since sold the Crisco um, product, the Crisco company. Um, but they were both, one was a candle maker and one was a soap maker. And back in the day, you used lard and tallow to make candles and soap. Um, you would mix it, you know, with all your ingredients. And lard was very high, high dollar. It was, um, you know, very expensive. And so Procter & Gamble um, were looking for a way to make a cheaper product that resembled lard. And that's when they started hydrogenating cottonseed oil. And by that time, candles weren't necessarily um, needed as much because electricity was on the rise, more homes had electricity. And so he had to find a way to get rid of this Crisco. They had different names for it and eventually came up with Crisco, meaning crystallized cottonseed oil. And they marketed it to housewives. And they said that it's more economical and it's healthier than using lard. And actually in some advertisements, they made women feel less than if they cooked with lard. Um, they referred to them as being poor if you cooked with lard. Only the elite wealthy women cooked with Crisco. Um, and so it was popular to cook with Crisco. They sold a, they didn't sell, they gave away a cookbook with over 600 recipes in it using Crisco. And so, <laughs> do they still, uh, I, no, I don't know. It's probably like an antique if you find one of those. Yeah, I don't know, little history lesson. Anyway, I'm gonna link the article below so you can read the whole thing um, because it's fascinating. And I think more people are catching on to the fact that seed oils cause a lot of inflammation in your body, um, whereas Animal fats do not, um, and they are actually more recognizable. They're a more stable fat source for our body, um, and they just taste better too. They don't make you feel bloated and, um, you know, and, and achy joints and headache and, you know, all the things that come along with chemicals and, and uh, seed oils. So anyway, <laughs> little history lesson. I'll let you go um, read the rest of the article. So I have um, my lard. Right? This is gonna go cool. I'm gonna cool this out in my garage because it's nice and cool here. And let me show you what it looks like when it is finished. Okay, here it is. This is what it looks like when it is cooled. Look how white and beautiful this lard is. And Hannah just made mention, it doesn't smell when it's, when it's cooled down. Only when it's heated, it has that, you know, animals animal and fat smell at first it really turned me off when I was cooking with it but um, yeah the flavor of it is incredible um, so yes I'm gonna put all this in the freezer the farm is kind of quiet now we sold our goat our dairy goat we just have our dairy cow and her calf our horse the chickens but the pigs well 
They're in the freezer. I just did the freezer shuffle and put everything in. So our freezers are stocked. Our pantries are well stocked as well for winter. Um, the animals are, you know, not as many now. The farm is kind of quiet. So we're gonna go into hibernation mode. And um, my husband just called, Brooke just called and said, hey, bring up the grow lights. <laughs> so. I'm excited for the next season. I'm excited for the next year. I'm really learning to enjoy winter. Um, and so I'll share with you guys our projects that we do this winter in our home, um, you know, how we start seeds, because that's just around the corner. But I feel like I just need to take a little breath, rest a little bit. Just take that time to think on all the things that we accomplished in 2022, all the growing that we did personally, um, as a family, as a farm, you know, before diving into the next year. And so that is my prayer for you guys as well, that you just have a beautiful end to 2022, savoring all the memories, taking time with your family and friends, and then also remembering to just rest and pause because that is what this season is about. Winter is not for pushing forward, not for, I mean, yes, you can make goals, but everything in winter is sleeping right now. And you should be too, you should be resting and envisioning what your spring is gonna be like. Um, not rushing it, but just taking that time. So blessings to you guys. And I'll see you back in 2023 with all things on the homestead and in the farmhouse. But for now, I need to go back to making some more lard. So I'm going to quickly show you in this last clip just how I, you know, put all of our lard in the crock pot. I think I have probably two more batches to do, one today and then one more tomorrow. All right, take care.